of, of Tuesday night <laughs> you content. Were. Yeah, and content. Here. Um, all right, so want to run a match? Yeah, I do. All right, you want to put this on the on the on the Twitch as well? Yeah. So I press Shift F five, and the Twitch people get to see it on the left there. Right. Okay. So um, what you're going to install is I hope you've already installed Docker. If you haven't, you can install it um, later. And then you're going to download a single script that we're going to post on the website, and double click on it. And then you'll see a terminal pop up with some output that looks something like this. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, here, let me uh, let me show it here. I'll just bring this up. So yeah. there you got it. Uh, just a bunch of random garbage that you can ignore. And then it will open a, brow a web page in your browser that looks like this. So on this web page, we can we you can configure the limits on your players. Like if you want to give them more or less CPU, if you want to give them more or less memory, we'll be deciding on the um, limitations that we'll be putting on them. In, on, in the scrimmage servers later. Um, but so like if your bot is crashing, it doesn't have enough time, you can just give it more time for now. Um, oh, that's super cool. I feel like I feel like we're gonna press run and it's just gonna crash the computer and then we'll come back and we'll make the numbers smaller and then it won't. Yes, exactly. Um, and then you also can, you, you can also choose between a set of players. How it's gonna work is you're gonna download um, a folder with some example funks players and an executable. Um, anything in that folder, you can um, run the game in. Anything outside that folder you can't run in the game, so you've got to make sure you keep all your players in the same place. So then if you've got like Dropbox and you're using that to share files, then you could like add that as a shared Dropbox folder. You could. We're, we're also going to talk about Git, which is another system that's an alternative to Dropbox later in the, later in the week. And we think that you're really going to like it if you haven't seen it before. Yeah, Git. Gets, gets, everybody's, everybody's mildly uncomfortable with Git. It's great. Um, okay. It's already running a game. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. But so we've got some players that are already set up. And um, you'll be able to download these players later and take a look at them. I might actually post one in the Slack so you can open it I've up. Got it, I've got it here if you want it. I've got these three at the top. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, uh, so these can serve as a basis for you when you write your yes, first player. We encourage you to take a look at these and like get your player started. So... How your players are set up is each player is a folder, and it has two files. One of them is called run.sh, and the other one is you know something run.py or run.java or run.c, depending on what language you're using. Run.sh is just a little script that will build and run your program. Um, our example players come with things that do that for you. Um, you can modify them if you want to add more build steps or something. Um, but it's basically pretty simple. Not much, not much going on. Um, so then. Right now, we've got, where's that thing? Did we close it? Uh, the example? Yeah. That's one. Oh, here we go. Here it's we go. these three, right? Oh, yeah. and this one. Okay. So once you have those folders set up, you can select the folders you want to run. Let's say I'm going to run Java versus Python. And you can choose the map you want to run it on. I'm going to leave it on default. And you click Run. And then you're going to get this nice page with a bunch of logs of what's happening as the game goes and happens. Um, and you get a separate log for Red Earth and Red Mars and Blue Earth and Blue Mars. So you can tell which robot's thinking about which stuff. So uh, what am I running? I'm running Java versus Java, right? Or Java versus C. Um, yeah, I'm running two Java engines. I'm running two Java engines by accident, which wasn't actually what I meant to do. Um, but so you can see that this updates as the match runs. And if we take a look at this file, we can see the code that's running it. Um, so it starts out by, you want to you go, go through this with me as well? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so we're starting at the Java one. So if you're a Java programmer, this will look like it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start by importing the API, which is in BC. Um, there's Java docs on the website, and the exact links to those are posted in the Discord and stuff. Uh, yes, that's a good idea. And you can make a full screen if you want. Yeah. Is this legible? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And you might have noticed that the screen on your right is less blurry than the screen on your left. Um, yes, that's, that's true. It's got to do with focus. Mm -hmm. So actually, maybe let's look at Python first, because it's you know, better. Um, all right, so let's run the Python player. Um, I feel like that's a good plan. So I'm going to start. So, so we see that the game ended. The winner was one team or another. And then that's going to be saved into a file called replay.bch18. You can change the name of the file that you want to save it to, so I'll call this next one replay2. Um, we'll set it up so that that automatically updates later, but we haven't gotten that feature in yet. 
There's going to be a bunch of features implemented in the next few days, and we promise that it'll get less bumpy as you go on. Um, so this time I'm going to run C versus Python, because I can. Um, I think it's something weird is happening here. It just keeps running matches. Um, well, anyway, this is better too many than too few, right? Yeah, this is now it's both they're both C. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> Give me a sec. I'm going to restart the thing and we'll talk about the Python in the meantime. I can start going through the uh, yeah, yeah, go, through go the through example. the example. So if we if we click on this guy, uh, which one is it that's the Python? I think that would be this one. Okay, so all of the methods and constants uh, associated with battle code. Is are, someone in here queuing matches? I think somebody saw my IP address and went to the website is what's going on. Okay, if you're in the Twitch chat and you're queuing matches. Please stop. It's, a, it's not quite ready yet. Uh, and the match server that you're queuing to is actually James's personal PC. It's we're, like running right now. And, and we're, so, uh, we're trying to run, we're trying to run lecture and, and we can't, we can't show the stuff that's happening if I can't, I can't do it. Can we change the port or something? Um, <laughs> probably we could, we gotta be more secretive next time. Yeah, um, I guess so. I feel like I didn't even say it out loud. Yeah. Well, we, we, it was on stream, I think. Oh, and maybe on, maybe no, on no, board. I had the stream showing just our faces. It didn't say, but maybe I muttered it under my Well, head. I think when you click on the, when we go there, you can see it. Oh, so. oh okay. So it's up and I think asking, right asking 200 people who are all anonymous to just be good is going to be challenging. So bear with us, please. Um, I killed the thing, though, and I'm going to restart it. Okay, so let's go through example.funksplayer.py. If you are doing it, can you please run a Python one? Because Python's the interesting one right now. We haven't implemented as many features in the other <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Um... Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at this. Uh, so we've got some import. So importing battle code gets us everything in the battle code game library that runs battle code. Okay. Now randoms for random numbers. Uh, sys is for operations involving the operating system, and we've got traceback for error management. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so sys and traceback. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about why they're using why we're using them later, um, but. And they're, they're a little bit more wacky custom Python stuff, but everything else is kind of straightforward. Like we want to generate some random numbers and we want to use the battle code API. Makes sense. Now print functions, those will be visible to um, the person who's developing. Yes, so those will get spat out. That's what's showing up in those, in those windows. So there'll be a separate print function. Well, that is to say print functions will go to a separate location for each of the four players in a game. Yes. The red earth, red Mars, blue earth, blue Mars. Mm -hmm. And eventually you'll be able to see them in the actual viewer too. And we're going to show you the viewer as soon as we can download it onto this computer. Um, okay. Also, yeah. this is, we, we are only supporting Python 3. Um, we do support PyPy 3, but we only support Python 3. So you have to use parentheses. Sorry. Um, yeah, there was a question about that in the chat the other day, and I, I told them the wrong thing. So now they know. Yes. So, um, so let's move on. Um, we pull the game controller object out of bc.gameController. Yes. So this is this line. You're going to see an analogs for it in the C and Python code. Although I don't think we're going to talk about C because C is like really un ugly API, unfortunately. But um, but so basically, what this does is when you're running inside. Yeah, someone's definitely hacking me. Uh, it gets just started again. Okay. Um, well, we'll talk about that later. Um, Oh, they're running Python though, so they're being very nice. Um, maybe it's <laughs> all right. Maybe, maybe it's one of the devs. Maybe it is one of the devs. Okay. Um, well, thank you, whoever you are. Um, so, when you're running inside our engine, when when you click, you know, start game, and then so, so then our our engine's going to go and start your code, but then your engine has to be able to talk back to us. We have to have two-way communication. So that's what BC .game, That's what creating a BC .game controller does. It connects to the running manager thing, which runs all your code. Um, and that's what's going to give you all the information about the game and how you how you interact with the world, basically. Um, and I'm also going to make a list of directions. We'll see that we we'll see what we're doing with that later. And I'm going to print, you know, my Python code started just to make sure I, I know what's going on. Um, another interesting thing here is I'm going to seed the random number generator. So I'm going to be using random numbers because I want me, my robots to behave erratically, right? I want them to kind of wander around because that's an easy substitute for actually doing something interesting. Um, but I don't want them to wander different paths each game because that's going to be really hard to debug. So if I say random.seed and then some number, that means that when I call random, it'll make a number that I can't predict, but it's going to be the same unpredictable number each, each game, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. Does that make sense? That way, if you've got a, you're testing different strategies against one another, mm -hmm. then you're really testing the strategies against each other or hoping to do that and not so much just the, the randomness of, oh, it turned out that if you move north on this game, on this map, that you get a little advantage. Yeah. So there's a sort of more general principle here of avoiding non-determinism. You want your matches to be as deterministic as possible in order to debug. Now, sometimes it's a good, you like, need to be non-deterministic for performance, and that's your choice, but just be aware that it's going to be harder to make sure your code is doing the right thing. Um, there's some other stuff that can introduce non-determinism, and we'll maybe talk about that in a later lecture. Yeah, if you feel concerned about determinism, and you think that it's an issue that we should fix, then you should drop it, because we're unable to do that. It's, it's literally impossible without building our own more complicated systems that we already have. Yeah, um, and that would delay the launch. You don't want that. Yeah, right? I can't believe. Can you imagine if we delayed the launch? Unbelievable. That would be terrible. Um, okay, so now remember we talked about research yesterday, right? You can you can set up. Hey, I wanna I wanna research this and I wanna research that. Um, we have this nice API where you can just queue as many researchers as you want, and they'll just the game will just chew through them as you go every turn. It'll eat, do a little bit of research and eventually it'll pop out for you. So if you wanted, you could make your plan of I wanna research this thing, this thing, this thing, and just do it entirely at the beginning of the game. Um, in this case, I just threw out some random stuff because I haven't read the specs. Um, so, so we're, yeah. we're queuing the research associated and with the tree of each unit. Because after all, there's a research, we call it a tree, but it's more of a path for each unit. It's I've got a question up there. Yeah, whoever that is. Can you queue research that hasn't been unlocked yet? And the second question is, can you queue research that has not been unlocked yet, but will be unlocked by the time all the things before it that wasn't the way we had an unlocking mechanic. Oh yeah, you have to uh, you have to research element one in the worker tree before you can research element two, right? And, uh, and that and that unlocks it. You queue the branch, so if a branch has like three levels, you can queue it up to three times. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to repeat that. So um, what you queue is you say rocket, and what that means is I want to research the next element of the rocket branch. Um, so if you yeah, if you just want to get all the rocket ones, you just say queue rocket, queue rocket, queue rocket, and you'll yes. get to the end. So it is in fact <laughs> impossible to use this API wrong. Um, which is, which is, you know, good. Unless you, I guess, queue it too many times, and then that would be silly. Yes? Um, are you allowed to pop items You can reset the queue, yes. There's a method for that. I mean, you can just requeue it, like... Although, although if you reset the whole research queue, you may lose the research that you're currently working on. Yeah. Yeah, you lose the... the so maybe you have to be a little bit circumspect about... Uh, putting new items on there. I'm, I'm not sure what functions are available, but the, yeah. when you look in the documentation, you'll see what's available for you to um, manage your research. Maybe we, maybe we should have a pop method that that could be useful, or or yeah. to maybe get. You want to use it for communication or something. Oh yeah, we if don't. If someone want... actually does that, I'm gonna like give them a, an award. Um, uh, yeah, so I guess we have to limit it so that you can't just because you know the research information. If oh, we make yeah. it accessible. Wait, did you download the client? Uh, no, I didn't know it was it's available. Right. You can send you the link uh, I need to download. It. Can you can you like not show the screen? Uh, yeah, I will hide the screen. I will hide the screen by going Shift F4. Do you have Slack? Can you go to Slack? Uh, yeah, Slack's up here. Okay, go to. I think it's in. Go ahead. General. Sweet. Oh, but they can see it. Uh, That's okay. Where's the? Oh yeah, you can unplug that. All right. I'll hold this. No cheating. Um, you get this when everybody else gets it. All right. Um, <laughs> So what oh, we're about oh, it's in the to show you, okay. we are pleased to present to you one of, if not the most attractive client that we've had. There have been hundreds of person hours put into this thing. It's really quite nice, honestly. And, and really, one of the special things we have is some 3D artwork for each of the units. Uh, uh, we don't have to go back to those little sprites that I made in 2018. Hey, Gina, can you post a link to the, to the prep thing? Because we've got these like 3D rendered uh, characters for each of the robots. And uh, they're so good looking. You, if you zoom in, you can even see the dirt on the decals that are printed on the side of the robot. It's like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, I was very impressed. Now, those units themselves are rendered on a somewhat ordinary looking, at the moment, uh, plane of territory. Because after all, it's a flat map and, and there's, there's, there's no... Uh, the map itself is not as detailed as it maybe would be in the future, but the units themselves, oh my goodness. Now, yes. I haven't seen the client it, it, I actually, very recently. Yes, so we're going we're gonna to see it together. And it will be subject to a lot of updates and improvements, which mm -hmm. means if you think that there's something that could be improved about the client, all you've got to do is let us know, and then, uh, and then we'll add it to the list of things we know need improving about the client. So... Um, 
So yeah, I think the typical workflow, if you're programming a battle code, and forgive me if you already know this, but I'm just filling time while we wait, is uh, you open up your favorite text editor, you know, like Notepad++, and you tell it what language you're programming in. Maybe you program in idle. And, uh, and you open up the file, which is one of the files in the folder in that specific directory where you've got your battle code installed. And we'll have a, a quick video we'll put out on exactly how to get it all set up. Yes, there will be videos, there will be docs. Please read them. Um, it will answer most of your questions. And you'll, you'll open up your text editor. You'll save some new version of a file where maybe you start with example funks player, or maybe you start from scratch, you start writing your player. And then you'll do something to build the player. And then you'll open up this uh, user interface that you saw just a minute ago. And you'll use that user interface to select which players you want to run matches against each other. And then you'll push the run button, and when you do that, I think at that moment, it'll be able to open up the client. So then you don't have to just parse through these, uh, these command line or print statement standard out things. Instead, it'll have the client there, and you'll be able to evaluate the performance of your player by watching players against one another. And uh, You want to you plug it ready, in and start up the thing? Look at that. Look at that. The timing is unreal. And if we plug this in... And uh, tell, show Twitch as well. Uh, and we will show Twitch. Thank you. Sh shift F5. Oh, hey. There's music. I think we should turn that down. Yeah. All right. That's a little better. So. Um, it went down completely. You want it off completely? Yeah, I don't <laughs> okay. I really want it right now. All right. So, um, right now, as of like for the next three hours, you just have to open up a saved match file. Um, I've just downloaded one from the match we just that someone just kindly ran for us. Um, so I don't know where it downloaded to though. Um, give me a sec. Da, 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 da. Oh, whoops. Yeah, right. It's in the downloads. It's in folder. downloads. It's just you'll have to find it among everything else. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, yeah, you're in the downloads folder. Maybe you just type the thing in the top. All right. Hey, there we go. Look at this amazing UI. Wow, I don't know how to use it. I'll give an exception. Getting control five's position in a group will, with only five controls when doing repaint. Fascinating. Is there something that says menu? Uh, yeah. Click menu, don't ever hit port. <laughs> don't touch port. Yeah, that's okay. the menu. Um, Maybe we're not gonna look at the client just yet. How about you do that and get it working, and then we'll figure this out. All right, so let's go back to going over the code. Wait, can you just look at Sanjay's messages? I can't. I'm giving a lecture right now. No, because he's telling you how to, they're telling you how to do Or they're going to come. You can just do something else. Yeah, let's just do something else while we wait for the people to come save us. All right. So going back to talking about the API. Yeah. For a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, do we have, maybe we could go through the documentation as well as one of these example funks players. Yeah, that'd be great. Do we have the documentation? Yes, we do. It is on the website. All right, that's easy. At this URL, which is... You know, when I was talking about this, uh, the API with you just the other day, I found it helpful for us to just go through what kinds of classes are available and mm -hmm. uh, what's, uh, what's present in each class, because that, that helped me get a picture of what was available in the game world and what could be interacted with. Nice. Yes. So we're visiting now this uh, API documentation, which is available on the website. At the and, Specs and Software tab. And I tell you, you know, when I started doing battle code, there would be days when I would write, I would spend, you know, an hour writing a program which gets a list of the coordinates that are within a certain distance of my robot or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then much later, I'd find out that was available as a method. And I just didn't know because I hadn't read through, I read the specs. But you hadn't I thought, read through the API. I thought the specs had everything in them, but hmm. they don't. In fact, at some level, the API is more important. Right, the code is really what the specs are. 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 It's true. Me mateys. Me mateys. So let's have a look at it here. So. Um, everything's in alphabetical order in here, and there's a couple things you're going to want to ignore, like these message classes. You don't need to know what those are. But here's the big beefy boy, the game controller, which, you know, we were just being, making friends with over here. Remember? Game controller. Okay. And we can see, wow, look at all of these methods. There's a lot of them, and they all do different things. And you can see that beneath each one is some information about what it does mm -hmm. and information about what arguments it takes. Especially if you're doing Python, you know, you don't know what kind of argument something takes. It, yeah. you, you know the name of it. 
But what type is it? Is it a map location? Is it an integer? Yeah, is it a, is it a string? So one, yeah. of the, one of the things that's different about uh, Battle Code this year compared to other years, I know you guys haven't done it in other years, but the ID of robots is actually incredibly important. Yes. Every time you want to do something with a given robot, you can see like uh, for can blink or, or for move and build commands, you'll need to supply game controller with the ID of the robot you want to do something as an argument. Yes. And that's a number, you just supply it a number. It's not some fancy object. Mm -hmm. It's just a number. And let's, let's take a look at that um, in action. So, um, for example, let's, I'm gonna skip through the code a little bit. So we have this while true loop, and every program that you write is gonna have one of these, and it's just gonna loop forever while the game runs. Um, when the game's over, we're gonna kill you. You don't need to worry about handling that. Um, so your program will die as soon as the game is over. Um, so it's just convenient to have this while true loop at the top. And each time we're just going to print the round because it's useful to say, oh, hey, what time is it? You know, what's going on? How much time do I have left until the earth is flooded? And if you're wondering, all right, if I'm in this while true loop, then how does the limit on the available time my player gets come into action? Right. And the way that works is with yield. So at some point in that while true loop, probably at the end, mm -hmm. you're going to say, okay, game controller dot yield or something like that. And that'll say, all right, I'm done computing for the round, and wake me up again when the next round of the game is happening. And probably at the bottom, we'll find something like yield. Is yes. it gc.nextTurn? Yes, that is the yield command. I see. So there you go. And now we can look at the pieces that'll take place within a given turn. Right. So maybe the most salient thing, here's a, here's a really simple piece of code, right? Um, so first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all of my units, that's all my, my people I control, all the robots that um, I have power over. And you'll notice he's put it all within a try loop, or a try, a try block, because if he were, for example, to loop through unit in gc.units, mm -hmm. or all units or something, right. then he might issue a move command to an enemy robot, and that would cause an error, which if I didn't have this big try block, would immediately crash the robot. And we don't want that because that means we die. Um, so. We have this big, we have a try block around it, and then for each unit, we're going to run a bunch of logic. So here I've got some factory logic, and we saw some of this stuff yesterday, um, right? And, you know, here we've got some um, looking around to help build factories and stuff. But I think the most, you know, good place, the best place to start is down here. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to pick a random direction. What I'm going to say is, I made this list up here, I can say, list bc.direction gives me all the possible directions, north, south, east, west. Northwest, southeast. Does that mean bc.direction is an iterable? How, how does that construction work? I haven't seen that. Uh, bc.direction is a Python enum. Oh, it's an enum. Okay, mm -hmm. and so if you just call list on an enum, it gives you a list of all the enums available yes, that's in the like enum. Yes, that's like a Python thing. Oh, okay, see, I hadn't seen that before. That's good to yeah, know. Yeah, I, I, I was Googling earlier, and I was like, oh, hey, this is the best way to do, solve this problem. Okay, because I probably would have put an open square bracket, and then bc.direction.north, and then mm -hmm. a comma, and you know where the rest of this goes. Yeah, although actually that, Come to think of it, you probably do want to do that because I think there's an extra direction here that we don't want. Oh, a direction.omni um, or a direction. Yes, direction.none, right, which will actually not move in any direction. Well, sometimes hmm. maybe you want to just take a rest. You just want to chill. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not wrong to chill. Yeah. Okay. So you know you you, you you see that. So so here I've got this list of all my directions, and I'm gonna say you know if I'm ready to move, I'm gonna move the robot. And you can see here that moving the robot, as we said before, is basically a method from game controller. GC.moveRobot, and then we supply it with the unit.id, that's just the integer number associated mm -hmm. with that unit, and then D, the direction we want them to move in. Now, I've got a question about the generation of these integer numbers. I don't know if you know about the details of how they're generated. Yes. But, oh, you do know the, the details. Yes, I do know okay, the Okay, so in the past, we, uh, we assigned every robot a unique integer, mm -hmm. and some teams would use the integer number as a way of assessing the number of robots the enemy had because they were just incremented one by one. So it'd say, oh, I, you know, here are my, I've, got, I've got robots one, five, and seven, and now I build a new robot and it's 11. Well, that must mean the enemy's got a couple of these guys in between. Is that also true this year? Well, actually what happens is that we use some um, number theory to generate a unpredictable sequence of numbers. Oh, um, that nevertheless are not overlapping. Yes, they never repeat. So you can't predict the next number from the current number. How unpredictable? Um, um, extremely unpredictable. And if you read the code, you'll see how much I'm talking out of my ass. 
Um, so, so what we've done effectively is we've taken um, an exploit and made it more difficult, and that way it makes it more rewarding as well as less likely for people to do it. Yes. And we consider that an effective fix. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's a that's a good that's a good thing to say. Um, that pretty yeah. much goes over this example. Should we yeah. look at the other? Well, there's there's some other stuff going oh, okay, on. Okay, okay, let's keep going. I'm not uh, I'm not. Too, um, too rip roaring to move on. Yeah. So then here's another thing we're doing, right? We're blueprinting a factory. Yeah. I I don't think you're going to be able to get through this year's battle code without blueprinting at least one or two factories. I mean, you could just roll entirely workers. But they don't fight one another. I mean, you could form a human wall. If you non, do nonviolent protest. I think it's not wrong to say that if you were to get your workers to surround the enemy factories, they wouldn't be able to unload any units. <laughs> I approve. And, and, and you, it would, that would be what I would call the Gandhi victory. Yes, it really would be. Okay. Because it's a sit-in. It's a sit-in. It's literally a sit-in. It's a sit-around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, but in this case, we do want to be violent. So we're going to build a factory so we can build some knights later. Um, now, the building looks a little bit weird. If you've ever played an RTS like Age of Empires, you might be familiar how they, like, first they lay down a sort of scaffold and then a bunch of little dudes sit around it and smash it with a hammer. That's basically how this works, right? So first, we have to blueprint it. But then we're also going to have to have our guys sit next to it and hit it repeatedly until it becomes an actual factory. Not hit with the attack command, but... No, hit with the, hit with the build command. Right. Um, because as you know, a hammer is both a weapon and a tool of construction. Mm -hmm. Of course, to be able to do that, the workers have to be able to know what units are around them. Right now, they're just sort of fumbling blindly. Like, can I move in this direction? Okay, move. Can I build in this direction? Okay, build. But they're not looking around. They're not, they're not seeing. And sight is the most important sense. Um, so here, we're going to do another thing. We're going to sense the nearby units. Um, yeah. So basically, first we want to get the unit's location, and we want to check if it's on the map, because you can't sense units for a unit that isn't on the map. It's going to break. Um, that will throw an error. So first we've got to be like, OK, is, is this unit currently on the map? It's not in space. It's not in the garrison. If it is, then tell me around this unit's location on the map mm. with a squared radius of 2. Give me all the units nearby. Um, and that's everything that the unit can reach, right? Because um, because it can reach adjacent tiles, and right. a diagonal would be distance squared of 2. Right. So if x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 2, this will sense it. So like that's either x is 1 and y is 0, so then you, know, you get 1, or x is 1 and y is 1, and then you get 2. Great. Math. Um, so then for each thing, and then nearby is also a, unit, uh, a list of units, right? So we can iterate it just normal Python style for other unit in nearby. If my unit.id can build the other units.id, then build and also print, um, because printing is useful. And keep going. You can only do one action a turn, so generally, once you've done something for your unit, you may want to move on to the next step of the for loop. Um, that, will also keep, that will keep you from doing extra computation, and it'll keep you from accidentally submitting commands you don't want to submit, because they just won't work. Um, I've had in the past years, when I've done b battle code, the experience that because I'm not very good at writing code and it ends up being spaghetti, um, I get the experience that like I'm writing code and as the code gets longer, I get more and more errors because I find out that I actually accidentally tried to do two things at once. And these can be sometimes random errors or, or intermittent errors because it's like, oh, I switched from bug pathing mode to building a factory mode, but I forgot to yield my turn between them. And so I tried to do two actions and it gave me a, an an error, and the error typically has something somewhat helpful, like uh, like you tried to do two things at once, but uh, but that can that can definitely be a thing. So you should remember that. I've got a question over there. Yeah. So can units both move and attack on the same turn? Hey, Gina. Yeah, because there's two separate cooldowns for movement and attack. Yes, okay. there's two separate cooldowns for movement and attack. Um, the workers action that you can only do one of per turn. Um, the worker action, like building and repairing. Um, I'll count as like an action for the worker, so that's like a separate kind of keep for the worker, but... Um, okay, I guess I was kind of wrong about that then. Oh. Uh, yeah, whatever, it's good. So we, we can make the, we can clarify in a future video and, and document mm -hmm. exactly which cooldowns and which things uh, apply, and I, I, think, I think once we all know, yes. then we'll tell you. <laughs> e exactly. All right, and then also we have this last bit of, we have some more logic, which is like, if the other thing I see isn't on my team, and I'm ready to attack, and I can attack this other thing, maybe I'll attack it. But wait, don't we only have workers in factories? 
Well, if we go up to the top of the logic loop, we can see the final piece of this puzzle. I like how it goes from bottom to top. That's like a well, good... It's because I wrote the code very quickly. It's like, a, it's like a really good novel. It starts in medias race. And then moves backwards in time. Exactly. Every chapter. Like that movie Memento. Anybody like that movie? Yeah, I got nods. Yeah, that's a good movie. I haven't actually seen it, though. Um, okay, so now we're going to do the factory logic. So remember, units are built inside factories. So for each factory, we're going to say, do I have any dudes inside me? OK, if I do, then I'm going to unload them, right? Um, you might want to have more sophisticated logic here, like not unloading if there are bad guys nearby. That's your choice. But to start, we just want to unload everything as fast as possible. And I think it's, it's good to note here that you don't ask the unit to unload itself. It's unable to do that. Yes. Uh, you, have to, you have to have the factory unload the unit that's inside it. Um, and a factory can unload one unit every turn. No, it can, it can unload as many as it wants. Could unload as many as it wants. Okay. So you could pop out eight guys all at once, which would be a really nice surprise attack, in my opinion. In fact, what you could do is you could unload. Let's say you only have one one spot. What you could do is you could unload a unit and then have that unit move and then unload another unit there. Because remember, we control all the units at once. But right, that wouldn't fit Ooh. into our current logic because we're just looping through everything. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It really, it's really a great difference from before when we used to iterate through the units one by one, and you couldn't really control the order in which they moved. Right. And you know, to me, that's so cool because we used to have the problem. You'd have six guys in a line, okay? And you want them all to move the same direction. The only way for them, if they're adjacent to one another, the only way for them all to move this round would be for the guy in the front of the line to go first. Otherwise, the other guys are blocked and they can't, there's somebody directly in front of them. But now, this year, that problem is gone. To me, that's great. I think I couldn't be more happy about it. Um, well, yeah, what a relief, huh? So we saw that you can ungarrison the unit from the factory. And, uh, and we see below that that you can produce the unit. OK, so this is, again, going in reverse order, right? Because you have to produce it before you can ungarrison it. If GC can produce robot unit.id, bc.unitype.night, so here we're just accessing a constant here. Then we'll go ahead and call the function uh, method gc.produceRobotUnitID, bc.unitType.night, and produce to night. So I think if you call produce, it'll still take some time before the, the night is actually produced. I think yes. something like five turns. Um, so if you're going to write your code and be like, oh, yeah, I'll just produce a night and then call yield five times. And then I'll use the knight. Well, remember that if you call yield five times, you'll be doing nothing during that period. All the other units will be doing nothing. So um, you need a smarter way to check and see if five rounds have passed than deliberately passing five rounds and doing nothing. So I think that's a pretty complete description mm -hmm. of what's been going on in this example Funks player code. So now let's watch it in action. OK, I'd like to give that a shot. All right, so I'm going to just click over to this other thing. My enthusiasm for viewing the client has in no way flagged by past experience. Well, we're not going to actually view the client quite yet, I don't think. That's good. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what we want. Um, so I'm going to run another match with this example Funks player Python player, and we'll see if we can spot some of those debugging messages we saw in the code earlier. Yeah, remember we had the code do a print line like, I'm making a knight and that kind of thing. We should be able to see those messages hmm. if it ends up making nights somewhere in these player logs that you see here on the screen. Well, we're actually good. Yes. OK, so was this a Python game? Yeah, yeah. Right. These are both C, actually. Oh, but strangely, it was selected. Maybe it only. I think it, I think it had actually died. So I'm going to restart my thing. That'll take about a minute. OK, um, I can go through the documentation. Yes, let's, uh, go ahead and do that. OK, so let's have a look at the battle code API documentation. This is a bit big. I feel like, I feel like your, your eyesight is good enough. I can make this a little smallable. smallable. So let's start here. Asteroid pattern, what is that about? Well, you remember from the specs that the, both teams can query information about which asteroids are going to be landing on Mars at what time. You see the carbonite deposits on Mars exist because asteroids land there. That's what it said in the specs anyway. And so it looks like you can use the class asteroid pattern to query information about um, the asteroids. Uh, it's possible that this is an object that just gets returned when you ask for something. Let's have a look. 
we can get the asteroid strike at the given round by asking asteroid and round. So if you do asteroid pattern dot asteroid parentheses round, then you'll get an asteroid strike information at the given round. Mm -hmm. Th this might be an internal function. I don't know how many of these are internal and how many of these are supposed to be used by the player. So you might never end up using some of these guys. Um, next one we'll look at, let's move ahead. Let's look at direction. So we've got an enum, and that contains directions. This got this center direction. So if you call direction.center, then you're going to get the center direction, which probably means that if you try to move in the direction center, it doesn't go anywhere. So that's a pretty useless direction, if you ask me. But it could be that it's useful in some applications. I just haven't thought of any of them yet. For example, ah, I've got a great example. Suppose you call the method direction2. There might be such a method somewhere here. Okay, mm there isn't. There might be a method in map location called direction2 that tells you the direction from one map location to the other. See this direction2 under map location? And if those two map locations are the same, then maybe it returns direction.center. So that would be one example of, uh, of how that could be used. Let's have a look at other methods. So we just looked at uh, direction. Let's look at game controller. That's going to be the big one with most of the important stuff inside. Okay, all locations within. Returns an array of all locations within a certain radius squared of this location that are on the map. That's the, one of those functions that you accidentally write yourself before you realize that it's already provided for you. So you give it, the, you give it just the location where the center is, and remember, it seems like it's going to give an error if you give it a location which is off map. Although, to me, it seems reasonable to ask for all locations within a location off map, and it'll just give you the ones which are on map. But, uh, but maybe it doesn't make sense anyway. And again, we use these squared numbers instead of linear distance numbers. Okay. Locations are ordered by the x coordinate, then y coordinate, and the radius squared is inclusive. And it tells us some other information. Type self. Okay, so it's telling you the type of each of those arguments. The type of self is game controller. And remember, when you're calling these methods, you just ignore this one. So to call this method, you'd call gc.all locations within, and then you'd supply it with the location, the radius squared. This element, this argument here, gets added automatically uh, by Python itself because it's before the dot. So you can just ignore this one if, you, if you're not feeling comfortable with, with this sort of self-notation. Next, we got apply turn. Okay, it looks like there's not too much information behind this, so it might be that, uh, that you're not meant to do it. I don't know what applying a turn does. Uh, yeah, you're, you, you don't need to do that. So if, if there's not a whole bunch of information or it looks confusing, it's probably an internal method. And yeah, we're going to try and hide those, but they're not hidden yet. Sorry. Okay. How are you doing? Um, I can, I want to walk people through the install process, even though it's not completely released yet. If you want, let's yes, do it. Yes, let's, let's do that. Um, so, soon, on this Bex and software page, there will be a download link that you can click. That will produce a file that looks something like, you're not in this folder, are you? One sec. Sorry, I gotta download something. All right, and you're gonna get a file that looks like this: battle code dash scaffold dash windows for Windows. And if you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just go ahead and unzip this and put this wherever in my file system I want to work on stuff. Um, when I go in here, I can see two executable files a server, and a viewer. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that currently they are zero kilobytes because I haven't actually released them yet. But in the release mode, you'll be able to click on them. Um, if you double-click the viewer, it'll start up the viewer application. You can just leave that running. If you double-click the starter, so the server, it'll start up a terminal. Um, the terminal will probably take 10 or 15 minutes to start up the first time. After that, it'll be faster. Um, although it'll still take like a minute to start up. It's a little bit heavy. Um, but while your code is actually running, it's quite fast. It's just that it has to like unpack some stuff every time it runs. Um, and then we have these example funks player codes. If I wanted to make another player, I could make another folder and call it 
James player, right? And I could throw some stuff in there. Now, if we look at these, if we look inside these folders, we can see the all important run.sh for Python. It, it, this is Windows and it doesn't understand new lines. Um, but, well, yeah, we'll try right click and op open with Notepad. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I haven't used Windows in like five years, so. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Great. So, we can see that we've got this nice little script here. Um, and all it does is say Python 3 run.py. That's all you need for Python. Um, the other languages set up scripts are a little bit more complicated, but not much more. Um, there's also this little thing here. If you wanted, you can add the O flag to Python when it starts up. That'll make it a little bit faster, but it will also make you get less good error messages. So we suggest you leave that off until you really need it. Um, we can also take a look at run.py, and you'll see that it's da -da -da -da. Where is the script? There we go. And run.py is the same script we've been looking at so far. Um, we've also got Java, which we have player.java, and run.sh, which I'm going to open with Notepad++. Um, is a very simple program that just compiles everything in the directory and then runs the player class while also attaching some things. Um, you're welcome to use another build system like uh, Gradle or something or Eclipse or IntelliJ um, for an IDE, but you can't use those inside the, the thing that runs the game. You just have to keep a, a, a file that looks something like this and we'll release files that support a little bit more fancy compiling later. Uh, but you shouldn't need much more than this anyway. Um, and then there's also C, which is, you know, the same idea. Um, and this will all be available to you quite soon, as soon as we release it, which will be happening sometime very quickly. Um, yeah. And you can see that the GCC, the, 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 um, the C file runs a little compiler to compile your program and then runs the program. Um, currently, build time is included in your script's execution time, but that is not going to be true permanently. That will be fixed within the next few days. Um, so yeah, just give yourself some more time for now. I see. I have a question about what can be included, because we showed, we saw that the player code was in mm -hmm. that run.py method, or yes. run.py file, but suppose as an organizational method, I wanted to have another file in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Well, so in Python, you can just throw another file in there and use it. So for example, I can say, uh, you know, I'll make a, a, a helpful function, which um, prints useless. Um, and then I'm going to save this file as oh, whoops, helpful dot pi. And then in my Python script, I can say import helpful, helpful dot helpful function, and away we go. Um, uh, basically the same idea in Java. If you make another file with a class in it, you can just use that class in every file in the folder. Um, but you can't make sub packages yet because the run.sh file only compiles files in that folder, but we'll change that pretty quickly. Um, CCC is a, C is a little more complicated, but if you're coding in C, we assume you know what you're doing. Um, so, yeah. Um, well said. I feel like I've got a much better idea of how things are built, and I'm looking forward to seeing the summary video, which explains everything all in one step. Yes, all at once, without, without futzing around and, and no jokes, just, just serious. That's right. Straight to the point. Um, do we have any other material that we want to cover in today's lecture? Um, we might want to show the viewer if it actually works. We should, okay. We got a thumbs up. That's definitely more thumbs than we had earlier today. Uh, can, you, can you help me do this? Yeah, you talk. So the, um, the availability of the client you know, and its user friendliness are currently in a state of improving readiness. Indeed, go to Google Docs, Google Docs. we will make ourselves available as uh, necessary to, uh, to help you out with the things uh, that we used and to, released to try good. to help you out to uh, begin with, but which had the opposite good. effect. <laughs> yep. So, 
if you didn't know already. We spend a lot of time on the Discord, and I'm happy to report that the Discord currently has like 700 people in it. So you can go in there, and you can, you can type things in, and I think you can even talk. You can even record your own voice and listen to others. And somehow, by doing that, it helps you with battle code. So I'm told. So I'm told. Solidarity. You know, uh, at the same time, there's, uh, there's people in the room who somehow, by the magic of random chance, have themselves figured it out. And then you can just ask them, and then they'll tell you. Okay. Commentary on this year's game. Questions on setup. This will be released very soon, we yeah. promise. Yeah, one there. Are you going to have fixed costs for API functions again? Or so, is it just however long it takes? So the question was, are we going to have fixed costs for API functions again? Uh, that's because in the past we had an instrumenter where functions that you call from Java related to battle code, such as uh, get a list of enemies, would have a fixed cost in bytecode. This year, because everything is compiled in who knows what language, and we're using compute time itself as a measure of uh, bytecode usage, there can't be any fixed cost. So we'll, it'll simply be the amount of time that it takes on your machine. And that, of course, is going to vary as a function of um, time of day and whether you're downloading something at the same time and what machine you're running on. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. So, so some people may lament the loss of determinism and the fact that on a given day, one team may win, on another day, another team may win. But I say to those people, you can't win them all. And at the same time, if you're so close in combat power to that other team that you won today and lost tomorrow, then that means there just isn't that much difference between you and them. And I think if you accept that all people are very similar to one another, it can help you love thy neighbor. I mean, it can help you understand that, um, that we're not going to have determinism this year. Yes. So, uh, I see that we're extracting something. Yes, I am extracting the most recent viewer. And we'll see if it works. Yeah, further questions. Uh, probably, food is being prepared outside. I wouldn't get up yet. It, 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 it is? Okay, I've got an idea. What do you guys think about, about letting them get some food, and then we can, we can set this up while they get the food? Yes, that sounds okay, great. So, so let's go ahead and break. Thanks for coming and get some food. It's Indian food. And then you can uh, have a look when we're ready. Okay, thank you so much for your patience. You downloaded script. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You guys are so lovely. Like in any other group of people, I would have had at least six tomatoes on my face. At least six. And an egg. But I don't have any fruit or vegetables or dairy products on me at the moment. Amazing. Hey, Amazing. check it out. We've got a running match. Let's... Hey look, it's the match! Although this is the C player, which isn't very interesting. Well, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. It was a, it was a dev build, so yeah. the console log was appearing, and also I forgot to do like Rip. the start function okay. on the first turn. But yeah, we could. Great. Uh, I want to see if I can run a Python game. Um, cool. Want to go to Twitch? See if they have any questions. Yeah, sure. Um, I'd have to escape though. I'm I, I, I'm aware people have been being becoming exasperated with, with us in the Discord. Should I push uh, escape? Uh, yeah, sure. I think you can all tab. Yeah. Um, Other than that, do you have anything more interesting match? You can get one. Yes. The only thing I won't render right now is uh, Asperis. Asperis. It doesn't matter. Asperis. Yeah. It like knows they're happening. Okay, there you go, people. What do you think? What do you think? There we go. We got some mixed reviews. Always going to be some lovers and some haters. Oh, man. What are mixed reviews? Yeah, I can even zoom into this guy a bit. I bet I could zoom in. Somehow. Look at the detail. Look at the oh, wow, detail. Sorry. This is also running in um, in like low graphics mode, so be aware of that. Try unmuting. Unmuting? Yeah. Am I muted? Yeah. Oh, you mean the map is muted? Your, your, your computer's muted. Yeah, okay, it's unmuted. 
It uh, it just doesn't make any sound at the moment. I believe it, I, use? I believe it is Unity. What map should I use, Gina? Um, socket. I thought socket didn't work. Oh, well, somebody ran two Python games, so that's fine. Someone definitely has access to my machine. Well, they only have access to this thing, so hopefully they're not going to pwn me too hard. I mean, I think it's... Oh, yeah, it has to be selected. It has to be, yeah, you have to have the thing active. It has to be active in order for the music to come out. But then I can't see the Twitch chat. Uh, yeah, so it looks like a 20 by 20 map or so. So about as small as it gets. Hey Max, hey Happy Quack, what's going on? What's up? How you doing? How you swell? I hope you're swell. Having a nice Wait, time. Wait, we released? Got your snacks. Wait, what released? Guru said we released. No, you said we'll release within three minutes. Oh, it's the third minute. Yeah. Is there any way to change the camera view? Just show us an actual map. Um, it's being worked on. It's yeah, being worked we're, on. We're working on it. We're working on it. Can I import models from Miku Miku Dance to replace the default robot models? Hatsune Miku. Uh, probably See, should be, no. yeah, yeah. Probably should be a, an available model for these uh, for these units, and you could have different Mikus for different units. I don't know which different ones there are, but I I bet there are some. I've seen I've seen that uh, people do that character in all kinds of different applications. My heart just stopped when I heard released. You know, uh, this I'll year do. this year I think you better just uh, take all the things you hear with not quite uh, yet with a grain Whoa. of salt. Is, uh, I'm, I'm quoting from the horse's mouth here. Because you never, you never really know, do you? You never know. This looks like a classic arcade game. Looks great. Is there sound? Yeah, I just have to click on it. See? If I click on it... Well... This one? And now open up a new file. There you go. The math is all like wolf from them, right? Yeah, they have unclassable things. Um, we just we don't have wolf and non-fatal cool. We just don't have Well, they have water, technically speaking. Yeah, that's close enough. I'm gonna get it. Are there drinks? Okay. Are there drinks? The drinks are, unfortunately, there's some there. I don't know if anybody forgot to put them out there. Nothing out there, huh? Imagine that. Hey, nice one, hey Wood. Nice one. You got him. What what we got for Indian food? Anything good? Oh yeah, it looks like they got those breads. I love the flatbreads. Is that good? Is that good or is it great? If you guys spill any food on the chairs, just pick them up with your fingers. Um, huh? Yeah, and then eat them. No, you can uh, you can drop them off in my hand. I'll pick them up. Um, yeah, we don't want to leave too much mess in here because we're not allowed to eat in here, and we'll get banned from the room if we leave a mess. Um, can we have Uganda Knuckles and Sonic Models? I I don't know who Uganda Knuckles is. I got to look that up at some point, or maybe I shouldn't. Winter Squirrel asks, "Is there any reason why this was remade in Unity instead of just keeping as a simple 2D game?" Yeah, I think. Um, I think the reason is that um, people like 3D. I like 2D. Uh, I, I did the graphics for one of the years. I did the sprites and I thought they were cute as frig. And which year was that? That was the... Uh, the uh, 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was adorable. Weren't those, weren't, weren't those just friggin' adorable? I loved them. And then, and then our artist did some other ones, but people were so attached to mine that they stuck well, with yeah, them. Yeah, we, we got an artist and like, their, art, their sprite work was inferior. Yeah, so I... Also, all their sprites looked exactly the same, so... Yeah, well, you know, they, it was their first time, I think. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's uh, some people like 2D, some, some people like 3D. Um, I would be okay with 3D if it didn't gimp the appearance. I, I don't know what you mean by gimp. 
3D would be fine if it were actually easy to see the map. The problem, see, see, Aaron Epstein did the same thing uh, like 2014 or some year, and he spent so much effort he made in C. Not, he made his own 3D visualizer in C. He was like interested in graphics programming, and it took forever. It was a monumental effort. And then to his dismay, everybody kept using the 2D engine uh, because they found it easier to see what was going on. So, um, you know, there's pluses and minuses, but you can't, dis you can't disagree. It looks awesome, right? So Bruce, the thing is how to have distinctive silhouettes. Yeah, oh, yeah. The distinctive silhouette problem is, is absolutely critical. And you know, one of the things I like about StarCraft is it... Two has, like, distinct, you can like, basically tell um, like, which class it is instantly. Yeah, they're, they're very distinctive, and I think people often use them as an example. Like, like, yeah, and I love their visual style. It's so it's so comic and exciting. Yeah, and apparently, it's because they're trying to be a great mod, but like, but you could not. You think like rocket jumping and other stuff kept happening, and you could not get that to mesh with the the, the serious graphics. So it just made the graphics cartoonish and everything worked perfectly. Oh, oh, I'm hearing the story that. Um, that the reason Team Fortress 2 is cartoony is because the uh, gameplay was cartoony. <laughs> and that was, that was just, uh, that's just how it worked out. So, uh, yeah, I'd show you a match or something going on right now, but um, in the end, uh, I, I, I'm just going to not do that. Yeah, I'm just going to do... The thing with is that you have to get it so that, like, um, the which tile something is on it has to be clearly visible. I think it would be actually would help a lot to have a little shadow underneath each one of them. Like each one have like a little straight like circular shadow right underneath them. Oh. Uh, that would that would help with it a lot. Uh, have a circular shadow under each one. Yeah. Yeah, and it helps you helps you see where things are. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to um. I'm going to exit the program, uh, just for the time being, uh, if it's possible. Exit. Where's exit? Do you Escape doesn't do anything, yeah. or maybe I'm in the wrong area. Yeah, escape isn't quite. What else is funny? What would you have had a program that you had to solve a puzzle to exit? It, uh, it seems to be this program that you. It's a lot of programs have a uh, a puzzle to exit, so I'm just going to try that. What well, if uh, it's possible just to make a program that's just like you had to go full screen? It is has a never ever leave full screen. Just simulates your computer. Oh, maybe it wasn't working because Windows Firewall blocked some features of this app. It might have been blocking the features where it was actually working. So it might be necessary to right click and run as administrator in Windows. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, we got link is dead, can't use it. Uh, Woohoo banana is bananaed away. What are people talking about banana? Battle code banana? Something about the release? Banana code. Banana code. We got uh, we got 151 people watching me just uh, say nothing. Seems like a bit now. of a waste, huh? It's 155 now. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a waste. Like maybe I should. Uh, okay, if some if there's actually a girl in that picture that this person just. Okay, I'm just gonna time him out. Uh, where's the timeout? I gotta time this person out because they said they picked they posted pics. Um, where's this ban timeout? Okay, get out of here. Maybe. You can't, uh, you can't, you can't put stuff like that here. You can't, uh, you can't post links of girls or whatever. This is a family-friendly stream. If we don't make this family-friendly, MIT will knock us out. Then we'll have nothing. Okay. If we don't have the MIT name, what do we have? We're not good at anything. We're not, we're not attractive. We don't, uh, we don't have uh, a lot of capital like the guys at Harvard. This is it. Cavervelia, we are our daily dose of socialization before we get a hold of the code and hide away in our private dev caves until next week. It was a Rickroll link. Oh, well, sorry, but look, I can't, um, <laughs> nice one, engineer13, I'm not going to ban you for that. That was great. HTTPS, <laughs> stroke, stroke, girls. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but a, a timeout doesn't really kill a person, does them? Uh, and we have to, we have to crack down. No, I'm, I'm just cracking down because I like... Crack down on a yeah, I like the uh, I like the feeling of power. Um, Max, you do have something. You have the potential to entertain with your FTL skills and commentary. Okay, let's play some FTL. What the hell? How want you play TF2? Huh? You want me to play TF2? Um, sure. I'm not that good at it. I, I've played it like twice. 
Whereas FTL, I'm also bad at it, but I think I have a better time. Let's uh, let's see where the heck is it? Isn't it here on the director? Oh, here it is. Okay, TF2. People want to see TF2. I'm sorry, I'm not good at that game. Like I can't even remotely play it. I can remotely play it. Why you tease? It's on the site, but the repo the repo is public. Sorry, Brigadier, I don't really know what you're talking about. PUBG! Oh my god, I don't, my computer probably can't handle that. Let's change the, uh, let's change the dimensions here. Uh, options, where's the, um, where's the video options? Video options, can I make this smaller? I don't think I can make this game any smaller. Maybe I just, maybe I'm stupid, maybe I just use the corner. Wait, I, the corner doesn't work? Can't use the corner? Can't make this a different size? I'm trying to make this a different size so that I can read the chat. Now I want to play TF2. Uh, how am I supposed to read the chat and play this game at the same time? Okay, I can just barely read the chat. Okay, so we had a we had a game going. We had Everett, Merritt, and um, and Happy Quack. Dwarf Fortress? Oh, Dwarf Fortress. I remember that. Yeah, we could play. I mean, that's still a game. You know, people are improving it. I think, I think I'm probably just going to lose here, but that's fine. You know what? We're here to have fun. We'll, we'll, we'll just play a little bit of FTL while you guys hang out. Okay. Oh, Factorio. Yes. I love that game. So I'm pretty sure the only way to win with this ship is with the combat drone, at least to begin with. Is the lecture over? Yes, a penguin's a fluffy. The lecture is over. We'll be posting some videos on how to get set up that are a little bit more clear than what we were doing. People are getting food. We're just hanging out. We're playing a little bit of FTL, just for giggles. If, you're, uh, if you need to go, um, or if you've got other stuff to do, go ahead and go. We're just going to have some fun. So thanks for tuning in to the lecture. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. EST. That's 23 hours from now. And we're going to do some more battle code. We're going to actually learn something. And things are only going to get better. I mean, as things get released, they, they only get better. I think you did a lot of things and something happened. Huh? What did I do? Are you asking whether something happened? I can confirm that it did. Oh, God. Well, a thing happened. Oh, no, no. Oh, my goodness. These guys, these guys can't see anything because I accidentally had it on. That fail streamer, fail streamer right there. Okay, the, the ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of scrap material. So our goal with this ship is to get to the point where we can buy a weapon. That's all we want to do. I'm gonna start a betting ring how many days to release. To be honest, his face is way better than FTL. Oh, what a nice thing to say. Are you aware that my face is not symmetrical? Once you've heard that, you can't see me the same way ever again. I'm gonna check the slack. Um, which part of the slack, the general? Yeah. Okay, I'm clicking the link. Um, what about it? Oh, we go to the README? What do you want me to do here? Okay, there, so I'm going to wait one sec. So the question is, do we get battle code tonight or do we wait for tomorrow? I think it's your call. Um, Super Troopa, start of Max's streaming career. You know what? It could be, man. Any day is the start of something great. And, and I certainly would love, like that. So do you get it tomorrow? I, it might be better just to wait, because it, it depends if you like a headache or not. I was wondering why there was no Windows download. Yeah, I think we're still working on it. Um, I should probably change information about the stream if I am going to play a different game. So I'm just going to call this Max is uh, FT or hard no pause, hard no pause, Max is bad. Um, um, and then I'm going to make the game FTL. And then <laughs> I'm going to do update information. Okay, so we're back. We're back.